Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm going to be making yogurt today so I thought I'd take that for you. Um, this is uh, about a quart of raw milk that I have left this week so I wanted to use that up to make some yogurt. Super easy, uh, requires no special equipment whatsoever so um, let's get started. So making homemade yogurt is really easy. It just requires your milk, a starter, I'm using an Icelandic um, plain yogurt. I got it from the grocery store. You could purchase one at some place like Cultures for Health uh, online that would send you a little packet of a uh, yogurt starter. Um, you need a thermometer and something to stir uh, everything together. So I have my raw milk here inside this pot. I took a cup of it out. Uh, to maintain a starter of my own so I don't have to keep buying store-bought yogurt to get my next uh, batch going. So that's on the stove here. This one I want to hit 160 degrees and it is warming up fast because I only have a cup of milk in here and we're about 150 right now so it probably just needs a couple more seconds. Um, this batch here, my main batch, I'm going to set on very low. So uh, my lowest temperature setting on this induction cooktop is 140 degrees. I only want my milk to reach 110, so I'll be keeping a close eye on that as everything warms up uh, just by using my thermometer and sticking it inside uh, the milk, kind of stirring it around to see what the overall temperature is. So that'll need a couple of minutes, of course, and we'll check back in a few and see how it's going. Okay, so our starter here, our one cup of milk I set separately, uh, has reached the 160 degree point. Um, so I took it off the heat and I'll have to let this cool to about 105 um, before I can add uh, the yogurt cultures in because too high of a temperature and they will die off. Too cold, they'll also um, be too inactive um, and not produce a yogurt. So that will need to cool off, we'll set it off any heat um, and that'll take a little bit uh, of time to do and we'll check our main pot here and it has just reached our 110 so we'll also take that off the heat um, in case I didn't mention it um, the raw milk will make a, uh, a less thick um, yogurt uh, because it hasn't been pasteurized or homogenized um, if you're curious about those things, I would recommend this lovely book called Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. Um, she goes into what uh, homogenizing does as well as pasteurizing does to milk. Um, pasteurizing also kind of denatures the proteins in milk. Um, so if you have pasteurized milk or like this little pot, we pasteurized it by raising it to a high enough temperature. The proteins do change. Um, it will allow for a thicker... Um, yogurt. It will also kill off uh, most of the bacteria that are naturally found in raw milk um, so that the raw milk bacteria doesn't compete with the yogurt culture um, bacteria and overtake it. So if you continue to make a raw milk yogurt uh, where you only raise the temperature to 110 and then you continue to save a little bit of that every week to make a new batch of yogurt, eventually that yogurt will start to get off um, because the, the uh, yogurt cultures are no longer um, able to outnumber the raw milk bacteria. So um, just something to keep in mind uh, if you want to make yogurt at home with raw milk. Um, All right, so it's time to add our starter. We'll just double check here on our temperatures. And our main yogurt here is at about 108. And what we're gonna use for our starter has cooled quite a bit. It's uh, just about 100, 102. So that's good. I'm heating up some water right now. I'll show you what we'll do with that. But first we need to add our starter. So again, I'm using this Icelandic starter, uh, or our Icelandic plain yogurt as my starter. And for this, uh, it's about a quart that I have here. I'm gonna stir in about a nice heaping cup, of, or heaping quarter cup of the Icelandic yogurt and just whisk that together. And those 
So I'll be pouring this directly into these jars where they will incubate. So this is again just the raw milk heated to 110 with a, a quarter of a cup, maybe a heaping quarter of a cup of uh, Icelandic yogurt uh, added in. And then for our starter, uh, it's only about a cup of milk, so I would say maybe a tablespoon or so of our Icelandic yogurt should be plenty. Whisk that together. And then pour that in a jar. And then we'll go ahead and put lids uh, on these. So I mentioned earlier that this doesn't take any special equipment to make your own yogurt. I have all of my jars placed inside this cooler. Uh, I just have a towel down on the bottom there for some cushioning and insulation. And all of my yogurts are placed here. And I have a couple of empty jars as well. And what I'm going to do... We're just going to fill up these jars with hot water and that will bring up the temperature in this cooler and create the perfect conditions to incubate our yogurt. So I'm thinking that should do it. Um, to maintain the temperature in here, we want it about 100 degrees. So I'm just going to nestle those together and drape a towel over this. So my only fancy piece of equipment is this little temperature sensor. And um, this reads out in my kitchen on a clock that I have. It wasn't a very uh, big investment. It, we have the sensor in uh, our grow tunnel, um, one outside. Um, and now I'm going to put one in here with the yogurt just to kind of keep track, make sure that two jars of hot water are enough to maintain the temperature in here. We don't want it too hot. We don't want it too cold. Right around 100, 103 uh, is great. So we'll go ahead and shut that. Uh, this will need to incubate for at least 12 hours, uh, depending on your taste. Um, you could go a little shorter or a little longer. Um, but we'll let that incubate and we'll check back in a few hours. Here's the um, thermometer readout inside the house. So it's just in our kitchen, uh, below our clock, uh, and inside temperature. This is the cold frame, and this is inside that cooler. So right now it's 102.6 degrees. So perfect temperature for incubating that yogurt. So I'll just keep an eye on it. I'm probably going to incubate it overnight, and I'll just keep an eye on it uh, before I go to bed. And so it's been about 14 hours and the yogurt's been incubating the whole time. So we'll give it a check here. Um, here's the one that's our going to be our starter for next time. And it's actually really super thick. So um, this is the one we brought up to 160 degrees and then let cool off made a nice thick yogurt. We'll save this as our starter for next time. And then here's a regular yogurt. It's definitely solid in there, but uh, you can tell it's not quite as thick as the starter uh, because it is a raw milk yogurt. It's a little bit more liquid. Um, but these are still quite warm. Um, temperature in there is 98 right now. So as these cool off, they will get more, a uh, little more firm. Uh, we could also drain off this whey um, and have a nice uh, thick yogurt that's more of a Greek style. But the actual yogurt portion, I don't know if our camera is getting this, the, the actual yogurt portion is a yogurt consistency. So um, again, we could strain this off. I'm either using a coffee filter or I have a nut milk bag 
uh, to make a thicker yogurt, but I'm going to call this done. But this will save a ton of money. Um, the container of yogurt that I found to use as a starter was a little over $5. Um, but from just one small scoop, I was able to make, let's say, three half pints um, and a cup of starter. So I'll be able to use this starter next time to make my next batch since that was um, pasteurized. And so potentially saving me a lot of money and keeping a lot of plastic out of uh, the the landfills and uh, out of recycling. Uh, so here's our final product after it's rested in the refrigerator overnight. Um, you can see it's gotten thicker and I have not uh, drained any of the whey off. You can see the whey here. Um, so just imagine if you drained all the whey off, uh, you'd have a really nice thick yogurt. Um, hit that like button below and the subscribe. Be sure to share this video with your friends. Um, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Tales from the Mutiny. You can find our blog at TalesFromTheMutiny.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.